CPON3, Optimality of Algorithms, our second topic of this part. First, let's look at the problem, our third problem of this class. Find the minimum of an array. So it is a very simple problem. Given an array in this representation, find the index i such that a of i is the minimum of the array. All right, yeah, the problem is very simple. Yeah, I believe everyone in this class can solve it easily. Yeah. But here, there is a very important topic I want to discuss, optimality issue in the solution. All right, so first, I want to connect this problem to a general type of problem I mentioned last time, selection problem. So this is a special case of a selection problem. So let me give you the selection problem first. So what is a selection problem? Find the kth smallest element in a given array, kth smallest for any given k. For our minimum problem, that k corresponds to 1. Okay, yeah. So, 1, the first smallest. Yeah. Then you can do second smallest, third smallest, right? The last one, nth smallest, right? Any kth smallest. So, that type of question we call selection problem. Here, I also give you the reference section 2.3, uh, 4.5, uh, talk about this topic, all right, yeah. So first, let, let's solve the problem first. The solution is very straightforward, yeah. First, we do initialization. We start from the first element and we assign the value of the first element to a special variable called min, minimum, store the minimum value. Yeah. Then the general step, we do this kind of processing. Do comparison. Compare min with a of i the value of the current element, a of i. Which one is larger, which one is smaller? So we look at the comparison result. If main greater than a of i, that means we have a new element that takes the smaller value. In this situation, we should replace the old mean value by a new smaller value and I do an assignment. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, if it's less than or equal, so otherwise, that means the comparison give us less than or equal result, then we move to the next iteration. Okay. Next round comparison. Next round, we compare main with a of i plus 1, okay, i plus 1, the next element in the array, until i equals the index of the last element. In that case, there is no i plus 1, right? So we finish processing all the elements. At the end, you just return the value, the final value stored in the main variable. Yep. So that kind of simple logic. Okay. Then, now we need to look at the performance. 
the number of comparisons used for this algorithm. The counting should be pretty easy for us. Yeah. The first assignment, there is no comparison. Yeah, because the first one, we don't need to do comparison, right? Yeah, the first one. After that, each element, we need to do one comparison until the last element. So you can see the total number of comparisons and minus one. So the problem is solved. The efficiency performance number also is there. Okay, yeah. Is there any question? It looks like we have everything here, right? Yeah, it looks like we get everything we need. But now we need to move another step forward. We still we have another important question we need to look at. Yeah. So what's that question? Look at this. Is it possible to further improve the algorithm? Is this the best we can get? Right? Is it possible we can do a little better than this? Yeah. So that is an interesting question. Another interesting question. Okay. Yeah. Because for this question, we have two options or two different directions to take. <clears throat> the first direction possibility improve the algorithm. We still we have some room to improve the algorithm. Second, we, we have no room to improve. In that case, we need to convince people that this algorithm is already the best we, the best, the best. So optimal, yeah, so we say optimal, yeah. Uh, if we have an optimal algorithm, there is no reason to further improve it because you cannot do it. Nobody can further improve an optimal algorithm significantly. Significantly. Marginally, probably possible, but not significantly. So what do you mean? How much significantly? Yeah, so later I will explain this. Yeah, because we need a little more knowledge before we can understand this significant meaning. Yeah. All right. Now we need to answer the question. Okay. Yeah. We need to answer this question. Yeah. That's the hard part. To answer this question, that's the hard part. Yeah. Sometimes it could be very hard. Yeah. But this one, not that hard, so we can answer this question. Yeah. All right. So to answer the question, optimal or not, right? Optimality. The title of this video, optimality of algorithm. To answer this question, we need to look at among all the possible algorithms, how to show that this one is optimal all the possible algorithms. So this part, it is not easy to control this part, all the possible algorithms, right? Why it is not easy to, you know, manage this part? Because it, this part could include unknown algorithms unknown. So those algorithms have not been developed by people. So how do you how do you include that part? Unknown algorithms. How do you include that part? Right? Yeah. 
Because when we talk about optimality, we should also include those even unknown algorithms. So that's the reason it could be very hard. Yeah. yeah. All right. But for this one, because this is a very easy problem, so we can answer that question, even if including unknown algorithms for this problem. We can still, we can convince people, convince people with rigorous logic reasoning, rigorous logic reasoning, no hole in it, very solid arguments. Yeah. So let's do that part. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So now we try to do this question. How do we convince people that our algorithms is optimal? All right, so let's work on it. Yeah. We need some imagination based on our real world experience. So when we convince people, we want to use some story that everyone is familiar with. Then it is easy to, you know, convey your eye your idea. Okay. Here we have one. Okay. We have a simple story we can use to convince people. Yeah. So what's that? Here we connect this comparison, yeah, comparison operation to a real world similar some activity. So that is pretty much equivalent to this comparison operation in our algorithms. So what's that? Match in sports. In sports games, different players, they need to have matches between players. Okay, so we use that. Okay. Match, all right, between two players. That's comparison, right? So one player beats another player. Can we treat as comparison? Comparison based on some special standard, right? Criteria, right? Yeah. All right. Then, after a comparison, we have three different outcomes. But after a match between two players, we have the similar outcomes. So we can co connect them yeah, in this way. Less than, one number is less than another number. Here we can treat as one player wins against another player. Because here we want to find a minimum, right? So that's why less than we treat as winning. Okay? Less than we treat as winning, not losing. Okay? Winning. Yeah. All right. Equal tie. Okay? The game is tie. Yep, that state. Yeah. Greater than, we treat lose. Yeah. Lose. Yeah. All right? Yeah. In this way, now we can give up our argument, convincing argument. Yeah. All right, so let's follow the steps of our logic one by one here. Yeah. First, imagine that main is the final winner, yeah, the minimum. So the minimum of all the elements, all right, we treat that in our story, the final winner of the tournament. Suppose we organize a tournament, so many players. At the end, there is one final winner. All the other players are eliminated by the outcomes of certain matches. Okay? Yep. All right. Then, it needs, yeah, the final winner needs to beat other players, other elements in the array through comparisons, through matches, 
through games, directly or indirectly. Here, this part is important. Yeah. Directly, we know directly, right? A greater than B. Yeah. B smaller than A. Yeah. So that means B beats A. That's directly. But sometimes we can also get win-lose information through indirect comparison. Yeah. For example, yeah, sorry, yeah. if A less than B, B less than C, can we get A less than C? Yes, we can, right? Yeah. Because the transitive property, yeah, the relationship between A and C is transitive from the middleman B, right? The middleman B, yeah. So here, A and C, they do not have direct competition, right? So there is no direct competition between A and C, but we know the outcome. We don't need to do another, arrange another match between A and C, right? Yeah, so that's the indirect. So we include that part. Yeah. All right. Next, if an element loses once, it is eliminated. Yeah. Based on our rule, a player, a player loses just once, then eliminated. No need to do any further matches because we know this player cannot be the final winner. Yeah, so that's true. Yeah. No. Then, next one. Each comparison can only eliminate one element, right? So think about one comparison, one competition, one match. The outcome, only one of the players can be eliminated. So one comparison, you cannot eliminate two, two players, right? One comparison, you cannot eliminate two players. And you cannot eliminate zero players. So here, because here, we assume uh, there is no tie. How about that? We assume there is no tie. Although we have that concept, but we assume all the elements are distinct. How about that? In the array, all the elements are distinct. Okay, so no tie. So in that case, we do not allow zero elimination in each comparison. So this argument, yeah, also correct. Then the next one. In order to get the winner, we need to eliminate n minus one elements. So that means only one final element is left one final winner right so we total we need to eliminate n minus one elements all right because one comparison can only eliminate one but you need n minus one eliminations so you need to do at least n minus one comparisons right so here at least n minus one you may do more than that, right? But at the least, the minimum is n minus one comparisons. Okay. There is no way anyone can do fewer than n minus one comparisons to get the final winner. This is the critical step, most important step, yeah, because it already gives us the conclusion. Yeah. All right. But our algorithms we just did a moment ago, that algorithm gives us exact M minus one comparison solution. We get that. We get that minimal number of comparisons. That means our algorithm is optimal, already optimal. Nobody can beat that performance, n minus one comparison, that performance. 
even including all the unknown algorithms. There are many unknown algorithms can, that can also solve this problem, but we are 100% sure those algorithms cannot do better than this one. They cannot. Hey, okay. yeah. So that's the final conclusion. And that's our convincing argument. Okay, yeah, so think about that. Then we proved optimality of the algorithm. Okay, yeah. All right, so then at the end, in this argument, so you can see in this argument, we use a very important method called elimination method. Elimination argument, elimination idea, elimination method. Yeah. And the reason I want to point this out, because it is very important in this class. Yeah. Try to eliminate as many as possible elements. When we design some algorithm, yeah, so we want to get the best of performance, right? Yeah. If we want to do that, sometimes we use this way, we can do better. Yeah. Eliminate as many elements as possible. Yeah. So later, I will show you many examples using this idea. All right, so for this topic, I want to stop here. Yeah, so we complete. Yeah.